Hello everyone, welcome back to another modification and mod review where today we're talking about the Electric Count of Averlin, also known as the Mad Count. Here we go. And he's right over here charging into combat. He's got a very interesting story. We'll look at his stats in just a little while. But right now he's fighting in the Battle of Blackfire Pass, the very third one. That was said to have been larger than the one that Sigmar Heldenhammer fought 2500 years ago. So right now, his soldiers are charging right into the fray. It's going to be an awful affair as they all go in. There's over 5,000 greenskins, and Reikland came to reinforce, thankfully. The great swords of Averland are really all that stands for Averland right now. But let's go talk about the Mad Count in just a brief moment. Let's go look at him right over here. He's got a lot of interesting abilities. But we'll go over those again in a little while. So as we watch him play, and as we watch him fight, here we go. Marius Lightdorf, the Mad Count, is the late Elector Count of Averland. Well, not right now. And was one of the most insane and bravest generals of the Empire. He's fought for it, swarms of bees, and half imagined fishmen. His most reliable advisor was known to be Daisy Kurt von Heldborning II, and was known for his dalliances with other noble women. And to let you know, Daisy was his warhorse. To a point where few would welcome him into their courts because, well, he would have his way. He was a very prolific lover and potentially good at it because it kept happening. Anyway, while he was strange and that was his public persona, there was another side to the Mad Count. He was an excellent poet, swordsman, tactician, and overall military leader. Early on in the role of Karl Franz, he would challenge other counts, led weird military campaigns that we spoke about, and cause issues everywhere. He also led the ruthless suppression of the Halfling Rebellion of 2502. When you kill really good cooks like that, you're not really the most popular man in the world. So, at that point, Karl would send his champion, Ludwig Schwarzhelm, to negotiate with him. His orders were simple, to ensure that his unpredictable behavior did not imperil the Empire further. And you can see the men fight right now. There's an awesome battle going on, where we are just heavily outnumbered. It's going to be, performance-wise, a complete cluster for me, but... I just wanted to make sure that we had the proper numbers in this battle as they all played out. You could see the Emperor just charge right into it all. And we'll talk about why he's here and what he's doing to help the Mad Count, who again is over here. And we'll look at his little abilities in just a little while and talk about the weapons that he is using as well. So let's go back in. So we're just watching him fight and there's just greenskins everywhere as we all charge in. There's artillery blasting through their ranks too. So. You had the Mad Count, who would be appointed with new advisors through Karl to curb his bad habits, and the Electric Count and Karl maintained a good relationship afterwards. In 2520, there was a massive greenskin invasion that would be led by a powerful orc war boss, and that was known as the Third Battle of the Blackfire Pass, which is where we're at right now. And you can see that there are a lot of greenskins right now. They're all just surging into our ranks, fighting us right now. Here's the war boss right over here. The Mad Count and his Averlander Greatsword stood as an island in a sea of greenskin warriors, which is what we're dealing with right now. There's a warrior priest right now using his magic, well not his magic, but his, you know, divine power to call upon the mighty Sigmar and is crashing right through the ranks of the greenskins. I have a rumor that Luther Huss might be here, who we'll talk about at a later point too. He's a pretty cool character. So let me go ahead and go over a little bit more about the battle. Carl would come help out Averland with all of his military might. He would bring three steam tanks to help Marius as well, and that's what we have here. They're way back there, just kind of shooting into the ranks of the orcs, and there's Carl fighting, oh man, black orcs right now on his own. So the battles continue to go on. There we go, we have a very rugged and powerful looking warrior priest. We'll talk about him at a later point. He's just walking right in. And then over here, we have the Mad Count surrounded by bodies. I love that. It's actually a really great shot for him, just surrounded by orc bodies, drenched in blood, cheering away. And we got that one guy. He's like, yeah, go, Count. I'm going to be your hype man. That's who I am. That's actually pretty cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and have him charge in right now. Anyway. So that is what would happen here for the battle. And to let you know, there's a really cool thing about the Electric Count that's been added in by the modification. So he's got actually unique Grom Brindle style campaign mechanics. If you know how Grom Brindle works, every so often he'll get a choice of four different options that will benefit his campaign. And so the Mad Count gets that too. So he's not only a unique leader to use as Averland, as a leader of Averland, but he's also got his own unique campaign mechanics. And he's got two blades over here. He, he likes to use a long dagger and his rune fang, which is right here. 
and then here we go. A stiletto dagger. Map wide, really. Can cause fear. This long dagger is said to have scared even the green skin, so good to know. Let's buff them all up. These great swords right now are still fighting right over here in an open field. Good thing there's no horsemen in an open field. Just nothing but blood and guts right now. I'm a little bit worried about trying at normal speed. We could definitely try that right now. But here we go. There's that war boss still fighting, reducing his own damage. I know the black orcs are very well trained, and right now so many of them are beginning to flee. We brought in nothing but just a sheer large amount of green skins. And thankfully, the Empire is here. All of the Empire. Well, all of Reichland. It's really a curious thing to have the idea that only two counties were able to stop an invasion that was comparable to the size of the invasion that happened many years ago that Sigmar and the dwarves would fight against the Blackfire Pass in the very first battle. That to me is incredible. And here's a flying black orc. I don't think he'll be getting back up. That's it for him. So let's go look at the stats of our good electric count as we try to get our soldiers to charge in even more. We just want them to push in deeper. That's the idea right now is that we keep on pushing in even deeper. So he's right over here. He's got his own rune fang, but let's go look at his stats as they are. Okay, so we're looking at, let me go back here real quick, just so we're not having to deal with any issues. We're looking at an armor of 85, so I believe the same as any type of other empire general. A leadership of 111, but it's due to all the nearby buffs, so it doesn't really count too much. A speed of 34. He's got a little bit more of a melee attack right now. I wish I could see like what was the actual boost here, but... It's got a chance for flaming attacks, but it's also due to the banner of eternal flames, so he doesn't have that by default. So we're talking about like maybe like 65 melee attack. His melee defense isn't as high, 45, and then a weapon strength of 482, and a charge bonus of 43. So again, one big thing to point out about the mod here is that it doesn't imbalance the game. I find these to be very fair and to be very reasonable. And to be blunt with you, imagine if we had these all in by default. Imagine if we had all these cool electric counts. I think people would go, man, I really like how that guy looks or how she looks. I want to know more about her. And to me, that is really the beauty of Warhammer fantasy. And there's so much more about it. And right now he's just waltzing in, doing whatever a mad count does. Okay. We're not quite done yet. We've got more things to look at. So if we keep on looking around, he's got Frenzy by default. That increases his weapon damage charge by his melee attack and makes him immune to psychology, so he's not going to run in battle. He's also got over here, we go look at that, Insane Bravado. He adds leadership to himself and to nearby units, and look at that, immune to psychology. Marius is an exceptional swordsman and military tactician, and nearby allies will fight harder knowing that he is fighting with them. It's really good to have. And then over here, the Mad Count. So, that's actually a really cool ability too. <laughs> and they say I'm crazy. So, it targets him. Active if in melee, disabled if he's got more than 50% of his health points. So as he begins to lose health, he'll begin to lose it in battle. So if he goes below half of his health, then he'll begin to rampage and he'll deal 28% more armor piercing damage. So again, you've got a very unique mechanic that you wouldn't be able to draw him back even if you wanted to, if he were to lose it right in the middle of a battle. And you can just see him fighting right now by Luther Huss, who's killed 17 so far. And there he goes, just charging in again. Let's have his great sword continue to fight. I wonder what we could do here. Could we actually play it out? Not quite. I mean, it's definitely kind of a big cluster. That's why we got to keep in slow motion. When you have that many units on the battlefield, it can be quite hard to kind of get that going. If I can find any way to make this work in the future, I will. <laughs> but it's actually not too bad. It's actually not, not too bad at all. So we're going to keep on chasing the green skins right now. We're not done doing that yet. Here we go. And it looks like most of the greenskins are now fleeing. I don't know how many more will be coming back. Some of them might be coming back. We could always reform right in the middle. I think we might end up doing that. Let's go over here. Let's go ahead and reform. Kind of like right in the middle somewhere. Right over here. Let's go move in. And there we go. Now what's interesting is that really the temperament of the Mad Count isn't too strange for the people of Averland. They're just kind of known for being very extreme in their emotional states. They can be calm, they can be calm, they can be quiet. At times they can be temperamental. I mean, they just really reflect their mad count in very many ways. And here we go, we've got two giants in a steam tank fighting each other for another cool part of our battle. And it looks like performance is now okay. Yeah, you'll have like ebbs and flows when it comes to performance. Here's some night goblins moving in. They don't like to break at all. They're usually just kind of going in there, doing a lot of damage, stabbing and cutting men. 
But the sheer scope of this battle to me is just rather amazingly enjoyable to discuss and to go over. It's why I love putting together these little scenarios. Now, in lore, Marius Lightdorf would fight alone for so long, saving the Empire for one. I mean, imagine if that Greenskin invasion had passed through here, right? Numbers would overwhelm the Empire, but he held strong, his greatswords held strong. Now, in lore, as I was about to say, Marius would die, but in my own lore for this game, for the time setting that we're in, if we have so many different lords who are still alive, then Marius, in my head, is very much still alive too. And again, he's coming over here to go fight that war boss. Ready to get revenge, he's like, I know what you did, I'm coming for you now. So he's going right into battle. Pardon me, get through to them. Let's keep on looking now. Yeah, those giants are no joke. The Black Orcs are still fighting. That's how strong they are. We should probably get over here. It looks like many of the Greenskins over here are beginning to fall. Let's begin to have a great sword charge in at them. And over here, it looks like Marius actually beat the war boss on his own. He came in and just took him down. He's chasing him now. If we buff him up completely, it's over 700 damage. Maybe 800 damage that he's able to inflict once you buff him all up with his rune fangs, stiletto dagger, and deadly onslaught. So for a period of time, He's able to deal an insane amount of damage for one human lord like that, but it's only for a period of time. It reflects the material nature of the Mad Count. So many of our enemies are now fleeing the battle. The third battle of Blackfire Pass has been won. It has been a very grand adventure, and I hope that many of you enjoyed it. Hearing about lore, hearing about a new lord, do check out the modification down below. And in the future, I would definitely like to play as the Mad Count. I think that would be a lot of fun. I certainly do want to find a modification that adds in all of the unique colors and symbols for all of the soldiers of that faction. But here it is right now. The Mad Count has survived. He's here. The Emperor's here. His men are just kind of wandering around, killing more Greenskins. But here we go. The very ending of our fight. There's nothing but bodies all over. Let's go ahead and get him over here and just kind of get a good look at the Mad Count. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and comment down below, and let me know what lord you might want to see in the future. And as always, until then.